Good afternoon, like everyone. My name is Apim Chanok Suwang Kawajin. Today, so I would like to present in the topics of the comparative concept of the different energy system that have been proposed to be used in the future aviation context. And to be consistent, the commercial aircraft mentioned here is the scheduled aircraft with the public timetable with the carrying passenger capacity at least 30 seats available. Uh, in this concept, there are three categories that I would like to mention. The first one is the liquid fuel. It can be from the bio-based feedstock or the renewable feedstock. Uh, this type of fuels have the similar property with the conventional kerosene used today in the commercial aircraft. The second one will be the batteries, and the last one will be the hydrogen. As you may see, several works have already did in terms of the environmental assessment analysis in each category, but most of them are conducted based on the biofuel production pathway, the first one, but not compared with the batteries and the hydrogen. And it's have only one paper mentioned on the right hand side. It's have only done for the comparisons of the environmental impact of the different three energy systems, as they are not easy to compare, especially when we have to compare in the use phase of the aircraft. Here in this concept, the objective is quite similar. We would like to compare with three different systems. However, we have three main different things to be mentioned. First one, we make a selection criteria to filter the numerous technology purpose into future temporal scope. Second, we conduct the aircraft selection corresponding with the desired distance travel. We have like two service segments, the domestic and the international route. And the third one, we integrate the expected certain amounts of the passenger in terms of the revenue passenger kilometers. And in this presentation, there are two phases. Energy production technology will be mentioned first, and then the comparative concept will be the next phase. Starting with the biofuels, there are six certified pathway as speakers on your left hand side. It can be produced from the different type of the feedstock. It can be the carbohydrate, lignocellulose 6 or the oleochemical waste. And the producers, uh, you can be see on the right hand side, the maximum allowable ratio is 50% by volume, blending with the conventional kerosene. Here is an example of the process flowchart of the biomass gasification and physical process that we create based on the literature reviews, patterns, and the technical report. And apart from the bell fuels, aviation electrofuels can be produced from the renewable sources like the waters and carbon dioxide from the atmospheres, or it can be like the non renewable, like the waste gas, sometimes known as the synthetic fuels. The main goal of the electrofuel is to use the renewable electricity to produce produce fuels. And you may see, obviously, in the case of splitting waters in order to produce the hydrogen. However, it has some limitations of using the hydrogen as the fuels now today, like the unavailability of the existing infrastructures for the refueling station, and not truly meet the environmental benefits from the hydrogen produced, especially from the steam uh, methane reforming stage. So the hydrocarbon fuels is still the main product here. To do that, the carbon sources need to be introduced. It can be derived from the capturing from the industrial waste gas that you may see with a different technological scope, or it can be captured from the carbon dioxide in the air. And at the time of the presenting, by combining the carbon and the hydrogen sources, it has only one certified pathway, which is the physical process. However, the methanol intermediate pathway is also introduced as the same that will be used to produce the gasoline that will be known for many decades. And to wrap it up, according to the technical issue, the produced liquid fuels cannot be used at the need form. It's have to be blended because of some technical issue like the lagging of the aromatics. And here is the different blending ratio of each certified technology. Blending ratio is considered as the crucial parameters in our comparative concept, and I will introduce later. And in case of the battery, there are five battery technology that we take into the consideration according to the European Battery Cell Roadmap 2030. They include the current use of the lithium ion, the advance of the lithium ion by modifications of the anode, com um, anode composite, and the solid state electrolyte batteries or SSB, the lithium sulfurs and the lithium L, which is the modifications of the cathode side. 
However, like most of them, the SSP, lithium sulfurs, and the lithium air are under like the early stage of the development and have several uh, challenges to be tackled. Okay, as the low battery energy densities are not more than 300 watt hours per kilogram of the current used battery, the energy is not enough to integrate in the commercial aircraft. And in order to compare with the liquid fuel use rate, the energy degrees of hybridization on the below of the aircraft phase is selected to estimate the ratios of the battery used in the propulsion light system. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I will present it like the hydrogen part that we mentioned is belong uh, to the water splitting technology. Okay. As you may see on the right hand side, the presenting here is the possible technology which can be used to produce the green hydrogen productions. And three approaches here is how the electrochemicals, like thermochemicals and biological approaches. Like here, I cannot like present or in the details, it will be like the later thing. Like here, uh, in case of the hydrogen produced, it, it can be used in the internal combustion engines or it can be used like the fuel cell converters. The parameters used in the comparative concept is the next stage of my study to fulfill and understand that which parameters can be used in the comparative concept. And it's with very pleasure like, to know the comments from the expert part of views to clarify the missing technical issue, which I should be taken into consideration to improve the comparative concept that I will present in the next slide. This one is the comparative concept or the contents I present that is belong to the two box below, as you may see in the gray box. Uh, in addition to the energy process, uh, production state that I mentioned, we also concern the expected air uh, demands in terms of revenue passenger kilometers into service segments of the two future temporal scope. We have domestic and the internal, uh, international route to be served. The RPK that I mentioned is the numbers of the paid passenger carry out a kilometer travel. This is the crucial parameters for making the calculations of the airline benefit. For the analysis, this more can be the actual statistical data derived from airport aligners or the forecasting value, depending on the resource objective. And here we would like to study in terms of the future aviation, therefore the forecasting value are selected. And in order to compare, go back to like the blue box above, we set the reference models by selections of appropriate aircraft model corresponding with the desired distance travel. And here's only tube and wing configurations of the aircraft is considered. And the selection criteria of each service segment is the ratios of landings and takeoff ways. The conventional kerosene is the reference fuels as currently used in the commercial aircraft. And the reference amounts of the energy is set and compared with the uh, alternative fuels approaches, as I already mentioned. Uh, as you may see, uh, as usual, when we conduct an LCA analysis, we would like to know the environmental benefits from the different energy system in the future aviation. On the top of that, the production capacity is enough to meet the air passenger demand that we set in the future or not, linking with the investment strategies of the bioeconomy in France. Like in case of the alternative liquid fuels, some part way may provide the betters. Uh, to the environmental benefit, but some are not. And in case of the electric battery approaches, even though they are purposed as the zero emission during the flight, but how the battery is the manufacturers might be taking into the consideration as well. And in case of the hydrogen powers, the global potential impact from the water vapor emission cannot be negligible during the operation. In addition to that, the environmental uh, friendly productions of the green hydrogen should be considered to ensure the true environmental benefits. And in summarize, in this section are uh, the energy system. I already surveyed the potential technology for the future's aviation context and made the selection criteria that 
I will not present here to filter them before conducting the inventory data collection. And the passenger demand in terms of an RP case have already been set based on the International Civil Air Organization long-term forecasting reports in 2018 as no updated data are available at so the time of presenting. And the next sections that I have to complete is the aircraft phase where I have to find the aircraft parameters, especially in case of the hydrogen power aviation. For the comparative concept, the comments will be very welcome. Aviation emission multipliers during the cooled phase will be further discussed and will be applied in our LCA analysis as the next stage of my study. And lastly, thank you so much for your kind attention.